All right. Hello, everybody. Welcome to our webinar for today. Uh, we're so glad that you have joined us as we are all getting ready for the holidays. Our topic today is embracing the holidays without deprivation, uh, healthy eating strategies for every festive eater. So hopefully this will be fun today, a nice fun topic um, as we get into the holidays. All right, so just a couple things before we get started and really get into the information. Um, today, we uh, we really hope this can be a nice interactive uh, program. So we'll, what will happen is we'll have a, the presentation and then the discussion, but how we'll do the discussion here um, on the webinar is you can see over here this picture with the um, with kind of the red box and the arrow is you can ask questions in this uh, in the toolbar you just type in your questions and then uh, near the end um, will uh, well you type in the questions near the end of the webinar and then you know our presenter will um, answer them for you so feel free to ask whatever you wish. And then just some disclaimers. Uh, we know that the information you are about to hear may motivate you to make some lifestyle changes. Please consult your physician before making any changes to your current routine. The Cecilia Health uh, Certified Diabetes Educator will provide strategies to help manage your diabetes. And this online Q&A section that we just talked about is intended to give general advice. This information is not a substitute for personal uh, medical advice and involves the professional opinion of the Celia Health Certified Diabetes Educator. All right, so here is your presenter for today. This is um, Laura um, Johnson. She has been practicing, she has been a practicing registered dietitian and certified diabetes care and education specialist for 12 years. Um, she is from Irvine, Kentucky, but now she lives in Houston, Texas. Uh, she has a passion for nutrition and enjoys cooking for her family. Some of her other hobbies are watching Kentucky basketball, traveling with her family and spending time with her Norfolk Terrier named Butter and it looks like he is in the picture as well <laughs> so very <laughs> cute and here she is here's Laura to um, share with you the presentation today hello everyone I'm so happy you're here this is my favorite webinar to teach of the whole year. Uh, the holidays are special and I always like to help patients and people in my circle that are close to just to realize that you can go through the holidays and have those moments with your family and making memories and just because you have diabetes doesn't mean you don't get to have them equally as much as everyone else. So I do want to just share there was a phone number on the first slide in case you missed it. Um, it's one 800 two six three six three one seven just in case you have any technical difficulties i'll say it one more time it's eight hundred two six three six three one seven all right well we'll we'll jump right in and if like she told you to it's active so if you miss something just write your question there i'm going to take a look as we're going along i'll usually answer the questions at the end because I, I answer a lot of them over the course of the webinar so we'll just check at the end as well so here's our agenda um you might want to have a pen and paper you know to write some things down and give you some ideas and to help you with your goals over the holiday season um, we're going to talk about some realities on common holiday meals tips for healthy holiday eating we're also going to talk about some ways that you can change things with your recipes or meal planning to help prepare healthy meals. We're going to talk about portion size and we'll have some time at the end for questions and answers. All right. So first, there are so many, you know, environments that can pose challenges for us over the holidays. You know, we've got road trips. I've got a 17 hour road trip that I take every Christmas. <laughs> quite a long ride uh, to Kentucky from Texas. Um, road trips can pose, you know, potential hazards for the diet, um, airport traveling, parties at your at your workplace. You know, you've got potlucks and catered meals that come in. Um, there's tasty beverages, um, a lot of seasonal things that are in abundance over the holidays. And, you know, the snacks and candy dishes at desks and things that are just given to you out of a 
a really grateful and, and kind heart, lots of things that were given food wise, lots of moments that we kind of need to prepare for. So while I said there are many things that you have to be careful for, you might also think about what are some things that you might have heard or things that you've said. I do apologize, the PowerPoint was a little bit slow here for you. It should load. Hmm. Just one second here. Just give me one moment here, y'all. I'm going to try this again. For some reason, it's not popping up for y'all. This has not ever happened on a webinar. There we go. Well, I'll tell you what this says because I've done this webinar many times. So have you heard things like, you know, I'll just eat one. You know, traveling is not really that a big a deal. I can know exactly what I need to get when I go inside of restaurants. Um, this reminds me of home. This tastes just like my mom's. You know, I'll have just one. That's not a lot, all right? You probably have heard that or said that. And I've said it, I know too, everybody does. So what we wanna prepare for is things factually that we know are in food so that we are aware of the carbs and sugar that are in items and what it means for our diabetes management and maybe ways that we can circumvent them becoming an issue, okay? So the first thing that would be showing up here is peppermints and peppermints like candy canes are another thing too that are in a lot of candy dishes. And one peppermint candy has 20 calories. So what I often find with folks, I'm gonna just get, do one thing, there we go. Okay, we're back in session. Uh, so 10 peppermint candies is about 200 calories. And if you had that on a regular basis, you gain about five pounds a year. So something that can be so easy just to go snatch out of a bowl and eat really quickly, chomp down on, it can really add up. So that's one. Another one that's not on this slide, but I'll tell you is very popular at the holidays is the, like the glass candy, like cinnamon, um, you know, that's just sugar with powdered sugar on top that they boil and then break into small pieces. That's really popular during the holidays and easy to kind of put your hands in and eat a lot. So you got to be careful for that's pretty much the equivalent of like what a peppermint candy would be. Another example here, you know, we're right on the heels of Halloween. So you, a lot of you may have some leftover chocolates that are still lingering around. So this shows you that one mini Snickers has about 100 calories. So if you had 10 mini Snickers, that yields about 1,000 calories. Routinely, you could gain about 25 pounds a year. So I'll tell you with the candy that's around from the ha Halloween right now, if you ask your dentist office, a lot of them participate in candy donation that goes like overseas to troops or um, different charities in the states. So if you've got some that is just too tempting and you want to get them out of your house but go to a good place, that's something that you could ask. I know all of our dentists in my area will do that. So if you do have these treats, because you know you could have them occasionally, it's totally fine. You just want to consider like what would it take activity-wise just to even burn off a few of these things that you might have as a treat. So to burn off those extra 200 calories of candy, say those peppermints, you'd have to do about a half hour of brisk walking, that's about 100 calories, and maybe a half hour of yard work, another 100 calories. So about an hour of activity you could work off the candies that you, you had. Um, to burn off 1,000 calories though, that's a lot. <laughs> Look here, you'd have to do an hour on the elliptical, which would be about 500 calories about 60 minutes of weights, so some good resistance exercises, about 300 calories there. And then an hour of yard work, you know, or stringing the lights up, that's a big activity. So don't forget that, that all of that you do outside is work. That's another 200 calories. So it would take you three hours of really strong, strenuous, you know, exercise to really burn off all of that chocolate candy that you might have consumed. So here is one that is probably not a shocker to some, but it might be for some as well. An average holiday meal has about 4,500 calories. 
4,500 calories. Of that, 229 grams of fat, 389 grams of carbs. I mean, as a lot of you are probably thinking right now, okay, my diabetes educator has told me, maybe for ladies, I'm having around 30 to 45 grams in a meal. For men, 45 to 60 per meal a day and a couple snacks. That is definitely a lot less than these carbs I just mentioned here. And you're right. It is. This is a big day of carbs. So no wonder, you know, those after meals nap, naps happen. I know I see all my uncles going to sleep over there. They've got all that, all those sugars that they're having to burn off. So where are these high numbers coming from? We have several listed here. And these are just like kind of the most common things that we have. So we have pecan pie, about 500 calories, 70 grams of carbs in that. A cup of stuff in, or as we say in Kentucky, it's dressing, about 350 calories, and that's about 35 grams of carbs. Six ounces of dark turkey meat, that's about 320 calories. There's no carbs there, unless maybe you've injected it with some sugar type of brine that can add some carbs. Um, the mashed potatoes, about a cup is about 320 calories and 30 grams of carbs. The fat will depend on you know what you add to your potatoes too, it can be in different ways. Gravy is about a 206 calorie amount for about a quarter cup and um, about 15 grams of carbs. You know, we make gravy a lot of times with flour or cornstarch. So that's where it will come from with your carbs there. And then green bean casserole. It's about 350 calories for a cup and 20 grams of carbs. The carbs are primarily coming from the fried onions, a little bit in the soup. Uh, the green beans are pretty, pretty low in carbs. They're, they're non-starchy vegetables. So that's kind of like a breakdown of just the most common foods that make up for the 4,500 calories there. So I want to just say straight out of the gate, there's things that you can do, super easy, quick things that you can do that will help you to get through the holidays and to be successful with your goals. First, don't skip your meals prior to the holiday meal. So have a breakfast or a snack before you leave. For those of you taking medications that are active for, you know, long periods of time, skipping meals could cause you to become hypoglycemic. So going, you don't, you don't want to make sure you avoid that. Um, if you go to a place, for those of you who take medication right before a meal that becomes really active, um, like some of you on insulin, you want to make sure you time it where you take it and then you're having your meal too. That's kind of the example of you don't want to wait too long, take it at your house and have to drive somewhere and what if they're not ready to eat? So you want to be prepared. Um, going to an event, you know, super hungry, you're more likely to overindulge as well. That's kind of like us at dinner times too. I tell folks all the time, if you eat an, a really early lunch and a late dinner because your work schedule causes that to happen, then you want to make sure you have an afternoon snack so you don't go into dinner just being ravenously hungry. You want to think about the people you're with then maybe more than the than that's the food that's present. You know, we all know definitely after our years of COVID and we're still still can get it, but you know, we know how thankful for we are for the time we get to spend with our family and socialize. So make the most of socializing and catching up with your family or maybe doing the things that are traditions for your family that you enjoy that maybe don't involve food. Just make sure it's not around where there's grazing involved for food. You know, consider having some low carb, low calorie starters, some low carb appetizers you might want to jot down. I've got a few here that I wrote down on the side. I wanted to tell you, you know, a veggie tray with like a light dip that's a good one. Um, meatballs, you know, there's a lot of meatballs that have a really like a jam chili sauce type of sauce, but you can get low carb sauces to make with meatballs that are, they complement them really well and make them virtually no carb. Um, it was sugar-free jam, sugar-free um, barbecue sauces or low carb ones. Uh, so those are something you could have. Uh, buffalo chicken dip is a really popular one in our area. It's basically like chicken and cream cheese and ranch. And you can make it with light products as well, but you could dip it with carrots and celery. And it's nearly low, you know, no carb, just a little bit maybe from your vegetables. But uh, those are non-starchy ones. They're negligible, basically. So those are just some things that I jotted down 
over the years that I thought were great ones to add to your low carb, low calorie starter plan. Um, you can also use a smaller plate to help control your portion sizes. So instead of a dinner plate, use a salad plate. Or if you're using paper plates, you know, we they all come in different sizes. So maybe just stay away from the bigger ones. Um, some are even bigger than a football. <laughs> if you've seen those big um, like China plates, there's some really large ones. And if you pile that thing full, you're guaranteed to probably, unless you're just putting all protein and non-starchy vegetables, it's likely that your plate's gonna be far too much of carbs than you'd really want, okay? All right, got more here for you. Serve meals in the kitchen and set at the table. That way you don't have the food right there in front of you, just tempting and taunting you. That's a good idea. Plan before you eat and limit the number of starchy foods on your plate. So just check out all of the options you've got and make a quick mental plan. You know, you might want a small sampling of several things or maybe a focus of one or two things that are more rich in carbohydrates. So spend your calories and carbohydrates wisely and make sure it's foods you enjoy. If there's something you eat, you know, year round, maybe pass on those. Maybe it's stuffing over potatoes or pumpkin pie over pecan pie or a roll over a dice of fudge. So kind of just look at all of the options you have and think, what do I really miss over the year? What's really special today? And if you eat potatoes through the year, maybe that's not the one. So a few things here. Be cautious of cranberry sauce and gravies or just sauces. So these can add calories and carbs more than you might think. So I, I do have a cranberry quick recipe I can share with you. So if anybody wants it, just put it in the questions and I can share at the end. But I just want, you know, cran cranberry sauce a lot of times is going to be like a lower fat, but it's going to be a higher sugar option. So you just have to be careful of how much you put on your plate. Okay. So here, here's one that I know has been very sensitive with families over the, over the years. You don't want to be afraid to be assertive. So if you're not hungry, just say no thanks. I can vouch that this is very tough when you've got that sweet mama or aunt that just insists. But you could just sweetly say, you know, I'm just so full right now. I just, I wouldn't even enjoy it. <laughs> Maybe later. Let me take some home for later. So you could just push it off for later. You appreciate it. They mean all the kindness in the world behind it and then want you to try what they made or eat a little more or something else. But, you know, you're satisfied. You don't have to have it. Thank you, but I'm just full. I, I might take some home for later. It looks delicious, by the way. I'm definitely going to look forward to having it later. Okay. Leave the table or the room with, with food when you're full. So when you're done eating and you're full, don't hang around the table or in the kitchen because you could be tempted because it is so yummy just to continue taking, you know, those tasty pinches and spoonfuls here and there. You know, so instead, maybe just offer to clear the table, maybe wash the dishes, go for a walk or maybe play a game, do something else to, to get yourself away from the temptations of it. Also, check your blood sugar through the day. This can help just kind of keep your mindset clear and help guide your choices through the day. So if you see if it's on the rise or on the fall, you know, what, what's going on? Sometimes you see that number, and you're like, OK, I don't like it. I'm going to stop. I see how it's impacting me right now. Let's just go drink some water and go for a walk. You know, it, it can help sometimes just seeing the number or two. So here's another thing. Leftover meals do count. So I've got patients who do a great job of taking leftovers and they can paste them maybe over the week. They don't want to be wasteful of them. And that's great. But some people say, I just eat on them to, for days and I can't control the portion. So we got different situations there. So either make or take them out that you know you'll eat. Um, that can help with limiting them. So if you're preparing the food, I'll say, you know, for example, my husband and I, we're the only ones that are usually here for Thanksgiving, um, unless my kids are able to come too, um, we don't make as big of a meal as it is if I were in Kentucky where we have, you know, 30 plus dishes. We'll make a small turkey, a small dish of dressing, 
you know, just a little bit of mashed potatoes, a little tiny green bean casserole, and I might get some rolls at the store. And our our store actually serves like half portions of like pumpkin pie too. So we don't really have more than that day, but we enjoy it for the moment. Another thing I don't have on the slides, but I'll just tell you, I get more and more emails from restaurants that are doing like Thanksgiving orders and you tell how many people there are and they provide you with what you need. So that's another way to kind of help control your leftovers as well. Um, and you can also look for where, places to donate leftovers. Um, when I lived in Kentucky, there were lots of um, shelters and um, charitable organizations that would take leftovers to give like to the homeless or people that were just in need. So that's another place that you could do it too. So recipe modifications, you can make a lot of changes with recipes that are even old recipes that will still make them equally as satisfying. I'm going to read through some that are on the slides here, but I'm also going to give you some more here in a little bit that are great ideas too. So first thing, just don't be intimidated to make the changes. I'd say if you're entertaining folks like going to a big event and you're responsible for something that has been around in your family a long time, you might want to give it a try beforehand just to make sure that it turns out as you'd like and as you think your family would like, you know, I would give that advice. But um, just be creative. You can do a lot of things to make it healthier. healthier. So swapping high calorie ingredients for lower calorie ones is, is one place that you could do it. You could do Greek yogurt instead of sour cream, um, or you could use like the light version of sour cream as well. Some recipes you could swap mustard for mayo. I know that's very different, but actually the zing that it has in the mustard can actually complement some dishes. Um, lots of desserts, you could swap applesauce for oil to make it a little bit lower in fat. You are adding carbs, but it can ha help with the fat a bit. Um, lighter butter like Smart Balance instead of butter for those rolls or the potatoes is one that you can do. Um, cinnamon or Splenda instead of sugar, that's one swap you can make. I'll make an extra note to this on the slide. There's a brand of sugar substitute that is safe for baking and just for topping with things too, but it's Swerve Sweetener and they make a confectioner sugar, a brown sugar, and a granulated sugar that you can make substitutions with. And I have made like a sweet potato casserole with that. Um, I also just top sweet potatoes with it and I've added it into baked goods too. I've made pie crust with the powdered sugar and the granulated sugar so you can look on their website there's lots of desserts that they have with their products too it's a it's a kind of pricey item it's about six dollars for a bag but it goes a long way and it's you're making something for a special occasion so it's um it's just an option i found that is very comparable to regular sugar and um for the patients have had it have seen a very minimal impact on their blood sugar so swerve is the brand and it's in the sugar aisle and I'm I'm not a I'm not a spokesperson for it I'm just a user of it <laughs> so with these switches noted here um like I mentioned earlier like sour cream this is something that you could use for dips and spreads and in potato dishes like you put it in mashed potatoes you can cut about 320 calories and about 35 grams of fat per cup of sour cream that you substitute reduce fat cream cheeses this is something that is often used in like logs that they put jam on or in a cheese ball or in the buffalo chicken dip that I talked about earlier. Um, and also just regular shredded cheese. So you could use reduced fat versions of both of these and you could cut 36 grams of fat and 320 calories for every eight ounces that you that you substitute with a reduced fat version. Greek yogurt is also great too. Um, I often mix Greek yogurt with like a onion soup mix. Um, it Onion soup mix can be a little high on the sodium level, but um, given it for just like a dip with veggies or something, it's really yummy. That's, that's the Lipton onion soup mix I'm talking about. Um, you can mix it with Greek yogurt and it's really delicious. And if you do substitute that, like instead of mayo, for instance, you could cut a thousand calories and 132 grams of fat per cup compared to regular mayo. So some significant swaps there. 
So vegetables here, um, you could replace some of the bread pieces in your stuffing with water chestnuts. They're going to be a nice crunch, but when they bake, they do soften as well. So that can kind of lower the carbs a bit too. Um, cocoa, when you're doing some holiday baking, if it calls for chocolate, you could substitute with three tablespoons of cocoa for every ounce of chocolate in a lot of recipes. It will make it a little bit richer too, but um, it's also very, really satisfying, can, can lower, lower the carbs a bit. Evaporated milk, you could substitute canned evaporated milk in a lot of the recipes that call for, say, heavy cream. If it's needing a little bit thickener, thickening to the evaporated milk, you could mix it with a little bit of cornstarch and that can be like a little slurry. So if the cream in a recipe was needing the thickening ability and you do use evaporated milk, you might have to use just a little bit of cornstarch to aid in that thickening process. All right, so here, portion size matters. I love the diabetes food plate method and this is possibly something that your educators talk to you about because some folks do a combination of carb counting and the plate method. Some people only do the plate method. So it's kind of just another useful tool that you can use. Um, so remember that when you dip your plate, your portion control is one of the biggest ways or keys to success. So make your plate colorful. Um, if you see a plate full of white colors, it's likely lacking, you know, veggies and it's probably higher in carbs. So make sure to dip up some of those green beans or roasted Brussels sprouts or asparagus that might be on your holiday table. Um, the low sugar cranberry sauce I was speaking to other uh, earlier, it's it's a really pretty complement to the dish and a yummy fruit too. Um, think of the my plate method when you're fixing your plate. So fill half, half your plate with the veggies, you know, be cautious of casseroles that have heavier cream sauces and buttery bread crust. So this in our family would be cabbage casserole, broccoli casserole, baked mac and cheese sometimes has a crunchy topping as well. So just be wary of those. You got to be really careful of your portions of those types of things. Then you'll fill a quarter of your plate with starches like potatoes, stuffing, the dressing or rolls, and the other quarter of your plate will be your protein like turkey or ham. And if you look up the holiday American Diabetes Association plate method on Google, they have an actual holiday plate that you can see and it shows all of the holiday foods on it too as an example. So you might want to jot that down too if you want to see another example. So positive reinforcement works. So first, don't beat yourself up if you overindulge. Just get back on track the next meal. Just Things that you can do, you can remember to exercise, move your body. You, know, you don't have to work off every extra calorie you've eaten, but a walk early in the day and after the meal can really help, you know, help you keep on track and keep you feeling good and keep your blood sugars managed. Another thing, just plan and prepare. Like I mentioned earlier, take a look at what's offered before you eat. And, you know, maybe you might want to contribute items, you know, will help provide healthy options and you won't be famished. And I can probably guarantee there's somebody else that would benefit from the healthy things that you're contributing to. I know everyone in my family would appreciate just having those healthy options too. Diabetes or not, everybody wants to have good health. And you can absolutely enjoy the holidays even if you have diabetes. Can you have the gingerbread cookies fudge and peanut butter ball, all of them in one sitting? Absolutely not. If you do have them all, you're going to yield a really high blood sugar and something that you're going to have to work on probably for 24, 36 hours before it kind of resolves. You can't have a lot of carbs. And for some people, it could really hurt if you eat a really large load of carbs and not take into account how it impacts your blood sugars. But you can make like maybe taking a couple treats home and maybe spread them out over the days that are following and enjoying them moment every moment that you have them too. It's something you could still do. I'll tell you too, a lot of times we're so full at the holidays that if you do have them all at once, you probably aren't going to enjoy them as much as you would have if you just spread them out. So just think about it maybe as you have all these really yummy treats to look forward to in the following days as well. That's a, a great way to handle that. And there's no food that you cannot have. I, 
always tell patients that from the get-go when they visit me in person or when I have them on the phone, I say, listen, before we get started, there's not one food that you can't ever have again. So I don't care what anybody says in social media, what maybe providers have told you, your mom has told you, your sibling, there is not one thing that you can't ever have again. It is all about balance and moderation. Are there things that you're going to have to be cautious of? Of course, but it's all about balancing it out. I always give this example around the holidays too. Um, where I'm from in Kentucky, there's a pop that's very popular called an L8. And if I ever told a patient they couldn't drink one of those again, they would probably never come back to see me. They love it and they drink it like water. They just drink a lot of L8. So the way I handle that with someone who has diabetes or just maybe in for weight management or healthy eating, I would say, if you wanna have maybe one or two a week, first get the smaller bottle and then for your meal, it needs to be virtually no carb. And example, pork chops and green beans and your L8 because they're literally drinking all of the carbs that they are allotted for the meal in the drink. And most of the time, that was just all I needed to know, that they could still have an L8 occasionally. So if you like eggnog or hot chocolate or maybe a special adult beverage for the holidays, just keep that in mind as you might have to balance some type of food in order to have it. Um, that is the only thing I want to say about drinks that have carbs in there. I will say you just have to make sure with alcohol too that you are cautious of that with diabetes. Some folks will drink alcohol and it can raise their sugar, especially depending on the type of alcoholic beverage they choose. And sometimes it can cause low blood sugars. So you want to be very mindful of the types of drinks you have, the amount you have, and maybe making sure your family knows too that you've got diabetes and that we're all on the same page and being careful, okay? All right, so here's a contract. I always thought this was sweet just because I had a patient respond to this one time and said it meant everything for her through the holidays. So the healthy holiday eating contract, this is from the ADCES, says I know that it's possible to enjoy the holiday wonderful food of this holiday season and keep my blood sugar stable. Today, I make a promise to myself to make healthy food choices during this holiday season. I will balance my food intake. I will limit the sweets and desserts I eat. I will avoid grazing between meals. If I drink, I will do so in moderation. I will maintain my activity level and I will check my blood sugar throughout the day to make sure I am within my target ranges. I promise to enjoy this special time of year and give thanks for my health, happiness, and the love of my family and friends. And I hope that you all read that and feel it too. Um, I do, this is the fifth time I've done this webinar. And every year I feel like the patients that come on here and ask questions, they have such hesitation and worry about going through the holidays. But I emphasize we have worked all year on getting you to where you can go through the holidays. You do not have to deprive yourself. You enjoy it and you're not going to um, lose the good diabetes control that you have worked on. You know, we, your providers check your three month A1C, you know, every three to six months they're checking that. You check your sugars every day. You can use, for many of you, you do. You can check your sugar every day and let that be an indicator of how things are going with your diabetes through the holidays too. It can be a real good motivator to say, oh, you know, my fastings have suddenly started to creep up a bit. I need to identify, is there something in my lifestyle that is, making this happen, I want to fix it now, okay? So check your sugars and let that be a motivator for you. Okay, so I do want to open this up to questions because I always do have a lot of questions for this one. So we'll go ahead and open it up. First, I do see here that you do want the cranberry recipe. So if you want to write this down, you could also look up lots of recipes online and you can write like diabetic friendly this, like sweet potato casserole or um, 
you know, diabetic friendly cranberry sauce and it will give you some ideas. I always say do the math yourself to make sure that it is accurate what they're giving you in terms of the nutritional value of it. Um, so do that first, but here, here's the recipe. So it's three cups of fresh cranberries, two tangerines, a quarter to a third cup of sugar substitute. This would be the swerve. And what you do, you just remove the seeds from the tangerine, process in a food processor, food processor, pour those with, in a bowl, then process all but a half cup of the cranberries. Then you fold together the processed tangerines and cranberries, as well as those, as well as those remaining cranberries that you kind of put aside and then you just sweeten it to your taste. So some people like a cranberry sauce more tart and some people like it more sweet. So just do it to however you like. So that's going to be better. I know the cranberry sauce I make for my family. I don't change it up for them because they want it every year. It has a cup of sugar in it. <laughs> so I make a light, the lighter version too. And I just make a note and say this is the, the low carb one or, you know, no no sugar added really um but i think that goes to this point as well we talked about like the sugar free thing you know label on things um just because it's sugar free doesn't mean it's carb free so just keep that in mind okay so you to make sure you still look at the carbs well all right well i have enjoyed all of you here today thank you so much for coming i'll show you here the next webinar is december 12th um, at 7 p.m eastern time it's take control inspiring tools and tips for becoming your own diabetes coach um, this is in english and then in january they haven't spoke to the time yet but it'll be the new year for the new you diabetes resolutions that stick so if you want to put those on your calendar they'll be there for you and just follow us for more exciting things to come